right? My goal here right now is to convince you that you do know how to do logs. If you can answer these questions, then it's not log you have trouble with. It's just the notation, okay? And you know that you can get over notation, right? It's just a matter of practicing until you feel confident. So, so here's some questions for you. Um, what exponent could I put onto a three to make it equal to nine? Could you answer that question for me? What exponent could I put onto a three to make it equal to nine? You can all answer that question. That's an easy question, right? The answer is two. All right. Here's a harder one. Um, what exponent could I put onto a 10 to make it equal to 1 million? What exponent could I put onto a 10 to make it equal to 1 million? <laughs> All right, might have gone too fast on this one. <laughs> Let's do this. What exponent could I put onto a 10 to make it equal to 100? Two, okay. What exponent could I put onto a 10 to make it equal to 1,000? Three, okay. Now, what exponent could I put onto a 10 to make it equal to 1 million? One, two, three, four, five, six zeros in a million. The answer is? <laughs> All right, come on, guys. Count the zeros here. Two zeros, it's a two. Three zeros, it's a three. Six zeros, it's a it's six. Okay, woo. Oh, you guys got me worried there for a second. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Sorry. Let's 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 dial it back a little bit. What exponent can I put onto a two? And you're gonna have to think about this one for a second. There's no shame in using your calculator. What exponent can I put it onto a two to make it equal to thirty-two? Okay. If you want to use your calculator or think through it, two times two is four. Two times two is four. Times two is eight, times two is 16, times two is 32. I'm at five. Do you get five? Yeah. Five, okay. All right, how about how about this one? Here's a bit of a curve. What exponent could I put onto a two to make it equal to one half? How do we move the two down to the bottom? You're gonna need what type of exponent? Negative exponent. And it's two to the first on the bottom, so that would be a negative one. Are we okay with that? Two to the negative one is a half. Yeah. All right. What exponent could I put onto a two to make it one fourth? Negative two. Right. Um. How about a tougher one? What exponent could I put on a two to make it? One over thirty-two. These are related. Negative five. Yeah, good, good. All right. Are we feeling confident with this? All right, I'm going to go back and rephrase all of these same questions with different notation. Okay, you ready? Don't write anything down. Just look up here for a second. Okay. What exponent? Could I put onto a base of three to make it equal to nine? You said our answer was two, okay? I'm looking at this problem right here and I'm gonna rephrase it in different notation. What exponent could I put onto a base of 10 to make it equal to 1 million? And we said our answer was six. One more and then I'm gonna have you write a couple of these down. Just don't write them down, just look up here for a second. What exponent could I put onto a base of two to make it equal to 32? The answer is five. Right? Here's the big thing I need you to realize. Logs are just exponents. That's all a log is. It's an exponent. When, they, when you see a problem that asks you to find a log, they're asking you to find an exponent. They're telling you what the base they want that exponent to go on to, and they're telling you what they want the final thing to be equal to. It's your job to figure out what the exponent is. That's it. Exponents are just logs. That's the big that's the big reveal for today. Exponents are just logs. If you can answer these questions, then you can answer these questions. It's it's the same thing, but the notation gets tricky. Write a couple of those examples down there so you've got some down. Maybe put down the words. I don't know if you're a 
if you're a wordy type of person, you might want to jot down the words that I was using when I took that. And it was your pet pony. Would I click on to a That's it. That's all a log is. Logs are exponents. And the beautiful thing about it is if you understand the rule for exponents, then when we get into all the rules for logs, and that'll be um, section 3.4, you can apply those rules directly. Like, do you know the rules for exponents? If I'm multiplying two things at the same basis, I add the exponents. Do you know when you subtract exponents, when you're dividing two things? Do you know when you multiply exponents, when you've got when you have uh, exponents on the inside and outside of a parenthesis, all those things apply directly to logs as well, as long as you remember that logs are just exponents. So the log is an exponent. Now, I do think they probably could have come up with a different notation for it that would make it less confusing, but I don't know what that would look like. We're stuck with what we got. We're not going to get into all the, the really big, weird properties of exponents today, but I want to talk about a couple of them, okay, um, that are going to be useful when you get into your homework. So, so are we feeling a little bit better about logs at this point? They're just exponents, right? You can answer these questions. You can, you can answer these now. Now, here's, here's, a, here's a good one for you. Um, you're going to think that I'm trying to trick you because this seems too easy, okay? What exponent can I put on to a 3 to make it equal to 3 to the 7? I'm not trying to trick you. I really am not. What exponent can I put on to a 3 to make it equal to 3 to the 7? So the answer is 7. Yes, it is. All right. <laughs> All right. So the, the corollary of that in log speak is the log base, what's my base here? The log base three of three to the seven is seven. And you may have seen this before, I hope you've seen this before. But the idea is if you ever have an exponential inside of a log, where the base of the log and the base of the exponential match each other, they essentially kind of cancel each other. Okay. So this is handy for when you get thrown some weird problems. You'll see, I'll, I'll make up some weird problems on a test where it'll be like, evaluate the log base 2.7 of 2.7 to the pi power. And the answer is, So here's a slightly trickier form of this problem. And this will throw some people for a loop. So how about this? The log, how about this? The log base two of four to the pi is equal to, Right, now, this one's a little bit trickier. We're actually going to need to do a little bit of work on this first. But watch this. I can rewrite four, can't I? What's one way I could rewrite four that would be convenient for this particular problem? Two squared. Right? And. What do we do with our exponents when we have exponents inside outside of parentheses? All right, this problem's a lot easier now, isn't it? Answer is two pi. The log base two and the exponential base two cancel each other out. So they can get a little bit trickier, but the basic idea is if your base matches, they cancel each other out. Um, I don't have a good way to put this in kind of regular form, but let me show you 
really quickly that this works the other way as well. If I took three to the log base three of seven, what would that equal to? And the answer is seven. For the same reason as this one over here. Exponential with the base that's the same as the log are going to cancel each other out. Whether the exponential is inside of the log or whether the log's inside of the exponential, if the bases are the same, they cancel each other out. What would this look like in this form? It would be like. I don't know what it would look like. <laughs> so you'll see some that are going to look like this. Are we okay so far? So this is kind of a canceling property of logs. And it's the idea is if you have exponentials and logs within each other, whether it's a log inside an exponential or an exponential inside a log, as long as the bases match, they're going to cancel each other out. Sometimes you have to get clever about manipulating them to make the bases match. See how the bases didn't match here. But we were like, eh, I can write that for so it looks like this. If you can do that, then then you can sometimes end up with a situation where you can still cancel log base two exponential base two cancel each other out. Okay, so have you seen all that before? So log number one, logs are not scary; they're just exponents. Number two, logs and exponentials can cancel each other out. That's super useful for us. We're going to use that when we get to solving equations with these. Uh, what else do we want to know? We want to know about special logs. Some logs are special. And they're special because, well, because every log is special. But um, really, they're special because mathematicians are lazy. And if we have things that tend to come up over and over and over again, and we can come up with a shortcut for writing them to save us our, ourselves like a fraction of a second, like mathematicians are gonna do that. So, so there's two special bases that come up so frequently that we abbreviate. Do you know what they are? Natural log goes with what base? Oh, no. Yes, that's right, yeah. Which we abbreviate as E. So, so, a log base E will rarely be written as a log base E. The log base E of X is usually going to be written instead as the natural log of X. LN stands for natural log, but in French, where they put the adjective after the noun, logarithm natural. Hmm. All right, there's another special log that we abbreviate. Does anybody know the other base? The other base is 10. And how do we abbreviate a log base 10? We just think about 10. 10. Kind of like with the square root, we never write the two inside of the radical. We just assume if there's no two there, it's a square root. With the log, if we don't see a base written down, we assume that the base is 10. And there's a good reason for that. Why do you suppose that is? Because we count in tens. We count in base 10. Almost, almost every culture in the world counts in base 10 these days. Not all of them do, though. Do you guys know why we count in base 10? Nobody really knows the answer to this, but. They think it's physiological. What do you think? Because why? No, don't, don't. The classic answer is because it's easier. It's not, we don't do it because it's easier. It's easier because we do it that way. You've learned to count in 10, base 10. If you learned about count in base 12, dividing by 12 would be just as easy as dividing by 10. So it's easy because you've learned it that way, not the other way around. But physiologically, why do you suppose we count in base 10? Because we have 10 fingers. Okay, probably because when people first started counting, most people were using their fingers. Now, a lot of cultures count in base 12. Have you seen someone count in base 12? So they don't go, they don't go one, two, three, four, five. They do this. They go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh. 10, 11, 12. They count the, they count the, what do you call those? 
well, like the parts in between the, the the knuckles and the crease. What are those called? Like the finger bones, I guess. Like the 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 segments of your fingers. So there's 12 segments on your fingers. And this way you can count. So you can count really easily at 12. And because of this, and since you've got two hands, you can actually count to 144 pretty easily because you use one of your hands to hold your tens digit, which is no longer your tens digit, it's your twelves digit. And your other hand holds the unit digits. And so, so you'll see people counting, well, not very much anymore, but you used to see people counting really rapidly on their hands with, with, with their knuckles. And because they could do that, there are all kinds of tricks that they could do, just kind of like we do with, um, well, you know how it's easy to divide by fives in base 10. It's really easy to divide by sixes in base 12. So all, all of that stuff um, is pretty easy. So anyways, we do base 10. We think that's because we have 10 fingers. Um, yeah, I don't know. I find that kind of stuff that fascinating. Um, we should write down the names of these. This is called the nat natural log, and I almost wrote it backwards. Natural log. Log natural. The log natural. The algorithm is natural. I don't know how you would say that in French. Natural is natural, isn't it? <laughs> and this is called the common log. So we can apply some of our, our recent endeavors to these. So when you see something like log of a thousand, there's several ways you go about evaluating these without a calculator. My favorite is the way I showed you a second ago. First of all, I keep in mind that there is a little invisible 10 written there. And then I asked myself the same question that I asked you guys about 15 times in the beginning of this lesson, which was, what is the exponent? Remember, a log is an exponent, right? What is the exponent I can put onto a base of 10 to make it equal to 1,000? What's the exponent I can put onto a 10 to make it 1,000? Answer is three. We could start getting really fancy with it and say ln of e to the 7 pi. And what I'm really asking you is, what is the exponent? Because it's a log. I could put onto a base of e to make it e to the seven pi. And the answer is, what's the exponent I could put? What is the exponent I could put onto an e to make it equal to e to the seven pi? What's the answer? The answer is seven pi. That's where we're canceling. So ln, I need you to start getting used to the idea that ln and e cancel each other. We'll be using that as well. They cancel each other out when the exponential is inside of the log, also when the log's inside of the exponential. So e to the ln e. This always gets people. What's e to the ln e? <laughs> The E and the LN cancel each other out. The answer is E. And E to the LN pi is pi. And E to the LN 42 is 42. The LNs and the E's are going to cancel each other out. Okay. Um, I'm looking at your homework right now. Uh, let's do one more of these. Um, let's work out what the natural log of, ooh, not equals, um, one more of these. This will be fun. Oh, this looks like a great one. Of one over the square root of e to the fifth. Ooh, this looks fun.
Now remember, E's and natural logs cancel each other out, right? But only if I can write it kind of in this format. I need it. I need it as ln of E to an exponent. Luckily, we know how to write uh, radicals as exponents, don't we? Let's rewrite this. Uh, I'm going to leave everything alone, except that I'm going to get rid of that square root. What's that square root going to turn into? What exponent does the square root turn into? Square root of one half. And then a cube root would be a one third, but it's one half. I don't know why I wrote one third. Sometimes it's hard to write and talk at the same time. All right, so the square root turns into one half. Are we familiar with that? Uh, I don't like that I got two different exponents in here, but we know a way that we can squish these together. What are we going to do with the five and the half? All five together with five times a half. Five halves. Oh, it'd be great if that E were on the top of the fraction instead of underneath that one. Any way we can make that happen? We move it on up, that just changes the sign on the exponent. It's going to become negative 5 over 2. Oh, now I know my answer. Okay. Right? The ln and the e cancel each other out. Final answer, negative 5 over 2. So we had to do a little bit of work to go from something to look like this to where You've got LN and E right next to each other. When that happens, then we're allowed to cancel the E and the LN. All right, there's one more section of problems that we haven't done anything like yet. I want to go over one example of that, and then I'll give you guys like 10 minutes to start on the homework. And you're going to finish at least half of it, probably. I hope it is, anyways. All right, we had some problems. We're going to solve the equations. Um, let's, uh, let's just do one. A log of 2x equals 3. We're going to solve this, and then we'll be done. Log of 2x equals 3. Now, what is the base that we're looking at here? It is the base of 10, right? Let's go ahead and write that in. I'm going to show you two different ways we can do this. Oh, thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Two ways we can deal with this. Where'd that come from? We'll put that back up in a sec. Oh, from the other drill. One of the ways we could do it is I could translate it. Remember those questions I was asking you at the beginning of class? How would you phrase that? What is the Remember, every log is a what? Okay, what is the exponent that what I would put onto a base of 10 to make it equal to what? 2x. And the answer is 3. See how I did that? So what is the base? So I drew it in a box originally. What is the base I could put onto a 10? to make it equal to two X. And the answer is the equal sign means the answer is three. So I put that three in the box. So I basically converted this into an exponential. I had a student once tell me that they saw it this way. They said the base that's underneath the log rolls over the other side of a river, the equal sign for river. And the base bumps the three up in the air. So it becomes 10 to the third, and then the log rolls away. It's, that was their way of doing it. And then we can solve this. It's an easy equation to solve, right? 10 to the third is 1,000. 1,000 equals 2x. We could solve that in our sleep. x equals 500. Yeah. Oh. You want to see another way we could solve it? We like alternate ways. OK, good. Check this out. Love this. Um, you know how in algebra you're allowed to do the same thing on both sides of an equal sign? One of the things you're allowed to do on both sides of an equal sign is take both sides and make them into exponents on whatever base you want. What base would be convenient for us to use on this particular problem? 
10, right? Because it's in a base of 10. So I'm literally allowed to take these and make them both exponents onto a 10. Or I could have picked anything else I wanted, but 10 is kind of convenient, right? Because what's going to happen with this 10 and this log base 10? 10 and a log base 10. Did you cancel? That's 2x equals 10 to the third, and we know how to solve that. So I need you to get, to get comfortable moving from something that looks like this to something that looks like this. Let me show you this visual thing that my student taught me again. It was it was actually they were really she made a little cartoon I was looking for and I couldn't find it. Um, it was really cute though. It had to do with Rammy. There was a ram. Yeah, it was a ram because rams like ram things with their heads. So here, there's a river here, and Rammy's a shy and bashful lamb. And Rammy the lamb hides underneath the log, but then when it sees something on the other side of the river, it gets angry and it comes over and it headbutts the thing up into the air. You see, see how it crossed the river and it headbutted the thing? But then the log rolls away down the hill, and so it just looks like that afterwards. I thought that was kind of a cute way to think about it, and like it totally works. So the, so the base is the, is, Rammy, the bashful, but sometimes violent and angry Ram. All right. I want you guys to see how it goes. You're going to have some questions on this homework, but see what you can do with it. Um, heads up, 